What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, as you can see, we're back at it again. I got the PCP air rifle. As y'all can see from the title of your screen, this video is going to be focused on tips. Now I'm hoping I can explain these tips the best as I can. I've been working on this video for like three years. I've more or less just been getting film footage from so I could pull and show you all throughout this video of what I'm talking about. But uh, I don't know how long this video will be. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take me to make this video. I'm sure it's going to take about a week of hunting straight to even cover a little bit of the fall tips. But today's tip is going to be focused on den trees because that's what I'm hunting tonight. I'm hunting on a den tree. I got two tips I wanted to mention real quick, and that's the weather and the time of day to hunt. When it comes to weather, the weather is based on how good squirrels will move. So, in my opinion, this is from all experience that I've had for the past five years of late season squirrel hunting. I'm talking November, or not November, I'm talking December and January type late, all the way to the last day of squirrel season I hunt. Always remember this, short and sweet here, the colder it is, the later you hunt. The warmer it is, the earlier you hunt. So for instance, this morning was a low of 26, and the day's gonna be a high of 48. If I wanted to hunt this morning, which I couldn't have to sight this gun and the stuff, if I wanted to, I wouldn't have come out of the house until eight o'clock. What I found is, let's say from 25 degrees to 55 and 60 and up, the best times you're gonna find to all the way to about 60 degrees from 25 to 60 degrees during late season you're going to find 95 percent of your squirrels are more active from about that 8 30 all the way to dark is when they're going to be active Them's going to be your hottest times of the day if you're not directly on the den tree first thing in the mornings you know when it's brutally cold still you're not going to see very many but as the sun comes up and comes up on top of the ridges and starts warming stuff up, that's when you'll start seeing squirrels moving, you know, transitioning across logs, getting to where the food is and all that. And then like uh, when it's brutally cold, like 10 degrees and it's gonna be a high of 30 and there's snow on the ground and stuff, I won't hunt until 11 o'clock, almost noon. I, I literally won't go until about noon. Uh, you'll find that the hottest parts of the day, that day would be when you're gonna see the most activity. So I'd say on a day like that, I'd hunt from about 11, and I'd set till about 3.30 in the afternoon. Then I'd leave, there's still, you'd still have an hour of daylight left, but I'd leave. Because about that time, when that temperature starts falling, a lot of them squirrels are going right back to the den trees. Or if you wanted to be successful, you could hunt the open woods during that time and if you knew where a den tree was, you could make a move and get set up in front of that den tree and wait on them to come back to get up in it. You know what I mean? So that's the thing about so cool about squirrel hunting that every squirrel hunt has its own unique story. Every single one of them. It's just, and, and you can hunt squirrels in so many different ways and stuff like that. And I think that's why it's so interesting to me. I love squirrels. Those two tips right there is what I wanted to talk about real quick. Those are really, you know, those are asked a lot of throughout the videos I post. But like I say, tonight, as y'all can see, I'm hunting a great big den tree. I was here in the last video, and I wounded one in here, and there was like seven of them in this one den tree. So I was finally able to get out here today, and I'm trying to make the most of it. I'm sitting about 30 yards away from it up against this great big old oak tree as y'all can see and uh i think it's an oak i ain't gonna say it's an oak tree it's a great big old tree though setting up against it trees straight out ahead of me and the sun's directly behind me now what a lot of people would have did they knew the den tree was here they would have set up on the ridge on top and been facing it of course which in a way could have worked if you had enough cover but what you'll see is a lot of them squirrels come out of that den tree and they're immediately looking around. You know, trying to make sure there ain't no danger setting on a branch like a hawk or bobcat on the ground, anything like that. You know, they're just immediately, they come out and start looking for danger. 
And if you're sitting there in the wide open, they're going to look at you immediately and be like, hmm, that ain't right, and take off, right back in the hole. So what I found is throughout the years, if I'm sitting on a den tree, I always put the sun on my back. So when he comes out and he's trying to look at me, he's just looking right into the sun. As y'all can see on my cheek, I mean, it's bright and it's beating right on me. So like I say, so I mean, that's a real good tip on how to set up on a den tree. Um, den trees, you'll see some of them hold up to 10 squirrels in it. Like this one, there are seven of them in there for sure because I counted all of them coming across that bank on the last video so oh, if the one that I killed died there'd be six of them in there this time so and if he's still alive then there's seven in this one tree but sometimes you can see upwards of ten squirrels in one den tree this is I guess tip number one on den tree that's how I set up on a den tree when it comes to a den tree food sources and stuff really doesn't matter so I won't get into that until uh Probably in the morning, I think I'm going to go hunt a food source, and I'll pretty much cover calling, um, how I call to them, bring them in close to me like that, and then food source. And I'm going to call tonight, too. I'm going to do a little bit of calling tonight, stuff like that here. After a while, as that sun starts to sink a little bit, I'll start calling, and hopefully want to hear it and come running in like they usually do. Like I said, I mean, that's what I'm most excited about in this whole video is going to be called. But with that being said, like I said, I'm hunting with the 25 caliber Umer X. I'm dialed in all the way out to 50. I've set about 30 yards from the den tree with the bank line up here. I do got my range finder. If y'all's hunting with a PCP air rifle, I'd recommend bring range finders. And before we go any farther in the video, it's gonna be a really long video, but I'm I'm cool with that. Hopefully y'all's cool with sitting back and watching it. Looks like the farther shot's gonna be 45 yards. I'm gonna kick back and see how the night unfolds. Y'all stay tuned. I just. Hopefully I got that in the audio at least. Uh, I sat here for probably close to two hours and I ain't seen anything. And I was like, well, I'll call. I called, give it 10 minutes, nothing came. So I was sitting here and I give it probably another 20 minutes. So I started calling again and I just happened to look up and he comes down to Logue and he comes in at like i tell you exactly how far. I'm going to guess him at 35, but I'll range it. I mean, he's definitely within range. 35 on the money. Literally 35 on the money. So he came in right to there. I don't know if the camera picked it up. I had my quarters in my hand, and I reached up to, like, move the camera to where he's about to come out from behind that tree. Dropped him as soon as they hit my, my, uh, the quarters fell and hit the, from here on out, even if it cost me squirrels, I'm putting this camera on me every single time I call. I do not care. Because it happens to me like that, just a snap of a finger. Let me see if I can find my fingers. I found one, but I don't think I'll be able to find the other one. I'll get back with y'all in a minute.
was trying to find those corn. Them quarters, I couldn't find them. So I'm just sitting here and I can hear one barking back in there. And uh, which probably was the one that saw me or heard me or whatever ran. And about that time I heard ch 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 I can hear the leaves crunching. And I happened to look up. I thought it was a deer at first. Because it looked like a deer peek his head around the tree at me. And I was like, oh shit, it's just a deer. That ain't no deer, you know what I mean? Well, finally it comes down out there. And I'm, at this point I'm trying to get the camera on it. And it slowly comes around the ridge to about 10 yards hopping. And it jumped up on that tree. But there was a <clears throat> branch on the ground. So I thought the squirrel was on the ground. In reality, he jumped up on the side of the tree and I had to lean all the way out and around. And I could just see his head and I put it right in the side of his head and shot and I heard the pellet go plump through him, shoot through the trees. Down he came and he's laying right here like 12 yards from me. He flipped all the way to me. But I'm not gonna move. I'm sure he's one of them that lived in this tree. <clears throat> had a duck in his mouth too. If I had to guess, it was probably bringing its nut back to put up in this tree. so many squirrels right here at this last light come off this bank across from me. I almost moved over there today, but I didn't. I just set up here. As y'all can see, I just had that one in range. He's got a den up in there. He went into the hole. But uh, I almost shot him once and then right there, almost killed him again. I had to swing my gun around the camera where I'd made a noise. He was already looking, but I bet you not exaggerating. At least 11 squirrels come off that bank over there. I saw four of them chasing each other. And then I saw a bunch of more down here on the right running around. I mean, it seemed like all these squirrels tonight was all scattered. I had one come up by the den tree, but not quite. He went into the tree up in front. But a lot of these squirrels tonight, they seem like they're all scattered out. Because I hear squirrels coming way up from this bottom, coming clear up on this hill. And then you can hear them climbing up in the trees and stuff, but I've seen glimpses of them on that ridge, and I bet you there was 11. That's a good thing, though. I know a lot of them is right there in those big old trees. So before daylight in the morning, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get set up facing that ridge right there and facing those big trees when they come out. I should be in business, hopefully. I think that's where they're all at. I'm like 95% sure that's where most of the sound stopped. I needed quarters tonight. I'm telling you, I could have brought especially that one up there. He went up in the tree early. I could have got him in here pretty good. I still got squirrels coming down on his bottom, so I'm almost hanging out to the last minute of light tonight, and uh, then I'll go gather that one up and just ease one out of here as quiet as possible and try to make it back in here. All right, y'all, that's pretty much going to be it. I got four minutes of legal light left. I can hear something walking back in there. I'm guessing it's a deer because uh, I think 95% of the squirrels, if not all the squirrels, are up in their dens by now, but certain uh, stars and stuff starting to come out now. I can see them up in the sky, but 
but uh, it's gonna look good for her in the morning. I'm telling you, I'm pumped. But uh, I'm gonna get up and get everything on, and I'm gonna sneak over and grab the one that we killed tonight, take a look at him, and then I'm gonna sneak on out of here. There he is, y'all. Made a perfect headshot on him, just like I thought. I was sitting right back behind that big tree. He had climbed up that one right there. And, uh, or no, I lied. He climbed up that one. But all in all, good night. You can kind of see the sun. It's going down. Like I say, I I think I have, I ain't checked my phone, but I think I got like two minutes of light left, if that. Might be a little bit less than a minute of legal light, but I'd say they're all done. Typically, squirrels are pretty much done with 10 minutes of daylight left. They're usually going into the den, so. Whew. I'll tell you what, it's getting cold. All I did was wear a long sleeve and a couple of wee little thin shirts tonight. So I'm starting to get pretty chilly, but with that, I'll see you all first thing in the morning. to get down to these two trees right here and get set up. I've already seen over my limit of squirrels this morning. Almost got a shot on him. Had him at about 30 yards, got the camera on him, and another one went and chased him, or he or she chased it. They went around the bank. Finally, I got set up. I think every squirrel in these woods was right here this morning. I saw over, over 12, over 12 at least. Uh, actually, I'm looking at one right now. I think he's just out of range. If I could have got in here this morning before daylight, I overslept. I wanted to get right here this morning. If I could have got right here this morning, I would have limited out by now. Literally. Guaranteed I would have shot my limit.
outranged him at 47 yards. Dialed in for 50, so smoked him, no wind, no nothing. Drilled him right in the head, dropped him. After I shot, I just heard like three of them run right here in front of me, literally right here. So I'm gonna get the quarters out and I'm gonna get the calling. I hope they don't cost me a squirrel because when they come up, bud, they're on you. The squirrel rut's heavy right now because they're chasing like crazy this morning. I'll go into more details on the squirrel rut. I know everybody's laughing, but a few of you, I'm sure a lot of you know about it, but there is a such thing as a squirrel rut, so. I mean, if you ask me from November, the end of November, all the way through December, here in Ohio is when I see them do it. When you guys call it quarters, you take two quarters. I shouldn't do this. I already know I shouldn't because I got so many squirrels. I mean, I know there's at least four of them right here to my right, but Take your quarters, hold one like this, put the other one on top, and scrape them. And what that does, it sounds like a squirrel eating a nut. And, and from one of my experience, if there's not much food around and that squirrel hears one eating a nut, he'll come running in trying to fight the other squirrel and take it from me. And I believe that's my belief on what it does because that's. That's at least what it seems like, because when they come in, they ain't playing no games. These things come in here to fight. They come running at you. And with there being so many squirrels this morning, I got a feeling this is gonna work. They might be a little spookish, because I mean, they just had a 300 pound guy come walking down in here, but like that one I just shot, he, he definitely saw me. He kept looking over here. But I finally got to range that tree, and I knew I was like, all right, he's in range. Dusted him. But I'm done talking. I'm gonna call, and let's see what happens, y'all. The food source is down over this bank right here. I do got some acorns right here, but a lot of the, uh, you know, the right where they've been digging a lot and stuff is down over this bank right here. I haven't scouted much of this right here, so they could be eating heavy down in here too. I got beech trees and stuff all down through here, so. Like I said, I did see a handful of squirrels down in there this morning, so. Like I say, I finally got to where I wanna be. I can hunt until about 10.30ish this morning, so I still got about almost two and a half hours. I'd love to get in here tonight, but I'm not gonna be able to, so. Unfortunately, but I'd love to get in here tonight. I see one. I don't think he came to the quarters. He's, he's a good ways off. back in the same tree where I just shot the one.
I'm not gonna sit here and give excuses, y'all. I think I'm just shooting simply too quick. Uh, I'm not sure if I hit that one, but I definitely hit that one, and I thought I heard him fall right next to where I shot the other one earlier, so. Uh, but I think I missed that last one. It sounded like I hit him, but I'm pretty sure I missed him. I watched him go down and kind of sat on the side of the tree for a second, so before I lost him again, so I think I missed him. That second one actually came closer to me. Just a hair, I'm checking my air. I messed with this spring hammer. I don't know if I told you all yesterday, but um, so now I'm gonna get usually about a clip and four shots to a full tank. Full tank that's consistent, so. I've probably got like three more shots left before I gotta go air up. That's how you know you did good this morning. But I'm gonna just kick back, it's still early. Like I say, I can still, I'm just gonna say for now that I did hit them because I'm not 100% sure, but that's three shot at this morning. I think two of them's dead. Not bad, not bad. Potentially three. I'm gonna still go check and make sure I, you know, I mean, there's no blood or anything at that other one, but pretty sure I missed him. I had to shoot through, I don't know if the camera picked up, I had to shoot through a wee little crack on that last shot to try and hit him in the head. And like I said, I doubt it that, that I hit him because if I hit him in the head, he's he's gonna drop immediately. That one that was sitting on that limb, I tried his head two times, but the sun was right in my eyes. So I think that it was the last shot or whatever. I just put it behind the shoulder. I could see then I wasn't so blinded and I connected immediately. So that's still a deadly shot. But I'm gonna sit here and we'll call with these quarters and see if anything else comes out this morning. I ain't had anything come to the quarters this morning. I don't, I just had a squirrel come up here, but it wasn't with the quarters. He just came up here. Which is weird, I mean. Right here, right here, right here. I better range that tree, y'all. Oh, he looks too far. soon. But like, I hear nothing. I'm, I'm done talking. I'll talk to you all here after a while.
I think it's safe to say I, sh I, sh I should have still killed my limit this morning. I do have squirrels around me still. But I've kind of got squirrels spaced out and I want to go get them. And um, I'm sure I'm going to spook them when I go over to move. I missed that one right there. I mean, I have no excuse. I thought I smoked it. I was watching the scope. I thought it got stuck. And I'm like, well, he's dead. And then all of a sudden it went up the tree. I'm like, hmm. But anyways, I, I missed that one. But the last one that I just now shot at, I dusted him. I watched him curl up in the crosshairs. But uh, as of right now, I'm pretty sure I got three down, potentially four. I'm running a little low on air. I'd say I've got about one more shot before I'm in the area that I've never shot this gun before, so I'm done after that. But I definitely got one more in the gun before I get to there. But I'm gonna ease up, sneak over, grab what I can, and uh, you know, look for blood and stuff, and then might just ease back over here and sit down for a little bit for about another half hour and then call it a morning. Like I said, I mean, I, I do have squirrels. I just don't like shooting them when they're kind of spaced like that and leaving them because then you get to where you're like, well, where was it and this and that. So I'm going to go round up the ones that I do got down and go see if I can't find some, come back and hopefully some more start coming up off that bottom, working their way back and I can at least kill. And also helps me keep track of how many I got. If I hit every single one that I shot at, including the one over here, I should have four. So I should be allowed two more. These range finders was key this morning. I mean key, that, I didn't even have to range that last one because he's dead in line with that same tree. So I knew he was right at 50. But hoping I can recover the three that I know I definitely hit. I'm just gonna ease up just in case. These, these ones here should be dead for sure, but that last one, he might still have life in him. I mean, there was literally so many squirrels out here this morning. It's insane. There's a lot of squirrels in here this morning. I'm watching up in the tree just in case if I see him. I'm pretty sure he's dead though, I mean. I lined the shot up perfect. Shot him off that branch right there. Looking for blood. Surely he's still up in this tree. Because I didn't hear nothing running across the ground after I shot. You know, there is this, but there's no blood anywhere. Let me, uh, I'm gonna replay the footage and see what happened. So after replaying the footage, he did go back up the tree. Dang it. I wish I could have saw that. I'm not gonna leave this tree though. This is the tree. I'm gonna come right back and set up against this tree. I don't think there's any holes in it. I hit him. I could see the hair fly out of him. It looked like maybe. A smidge low of the lungs, but nonetheless, he's up in this tree. I'm gonna ease up and get these two, potentially three, and then ease right back here and just set up at the bottom of this tree. I really don't plan on killing any more squirrels because I done made so much racket, but I don't know if these pellets are just zipping through these squirrels so fast because they're. My gun's shooting so quick and there's such a light green pellet. So 
especially from what I hunted with last week. But look at all this blood, y'all. Two of these squirrels 100% dropped out of the tree. 100%. So it looks like I'm gonna have to track them down. I got tons of blood right here. Right here. I mean, just right here. Did I walk past one? I mean, wow. It's, it's unreal how much blood there is. I might have to switch back to the hollow points if I'm wanting to shoot 50 yards I'm going to because I mean these they should have killed them upon impact I think they're just zipping through them so fast before the squirrels even know that they're hit that's 100% lung blood literally chunks of lung blood I mean it looks like I shot a deer that's how much blood there is which I mean rightfully I shot two squirrels right here All right, y'all. I've looked everywhere. I went under logs, flipped logs over, the whole nine. I can't recover any of them squirrels. I walked up on the hill where I shot at the one and missed twice. I missed him completely like I thought. I saw him go down the tree and sat there and all that. So I figured I missed him, but I checked anyway. And, uh, but as of them two that I shot with all the blood right there, I could not recover. I got down on my hands and knees. I kept crawling around. I kept looking for like trails leaving. I could not come up with anything. There's lung blood and all that. Where I'm positioned right here, when they fall, I can't see them over that ridge. Um, I could hear, I could hear them hit the ground. I couldn't hear them leave, but also there was a lot of squirrels over there. So it was just a bunch of racket throughout the morning. So. <clears throat> But I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and talk y'all's ear off about it. You know, of course I'm mad and all that, but. The only thing I can come up with is since I've adjusted this, since I've adjusted this hammer on this gun and it made it shoot way harder. It shot hard before. But uh, I don't know, I was on YouTube, seen a video of a dude doing it, so I said, I'm gonna do it, and I did it. Now this gun is insane. It's fast. It's, it's, this gun's shooting like 1,300 feet per second and all that, but anyway, this gun's moving. So the only thing I can come up with, I'm shooting 27 grain JTSs. I actually might have the pellet pack here. This is what I'm shooting dead centers they're deadly accurate I mean these things are deadly accurate all the way out to 50 yards 50 yards I'm shooting about a I'd say a golf ball group and at 30 I'm shooting a dime size group and uh with them I mean I'm talking deadly so I don't think I can come up with is the pellets zipping through them so quick the squirrels ain't even really realizing they're hit they feel the initial hit, but, and that's what knocks them down out of the tree, but then they run. I mean, that's the thing I come up with. Or, there was like a bobcat or something over there, and when I shot them squirrels, it just snuck on over and grabbed them and took off with them. Because there should have been two of them laying there side by side. I watched both of them squirrels drop. The one hung upside down and then fell, like it was a headshot. The one was lung shot. I literally found chunks of lung. But I can't come up with the squirrels. I walked around the base of the tree. I didn't find any holes up in that tree. Obviously, they didn't go back up the tree. And I would even check like the bark for blood. And didn't find no blood on the bark. I walked through the like around the leaves and stuff. Couldn't find no blood around the leaves. So I have no idea. I'm, I mean, I I just don't know what happened. I'm gonna go back to using the Barracuda Hunters. Um, I got a pellet at the house right now. They, they advertise that the pellet hits and it breaks into two pieces. 
I got a pellet out the house. It's the only one I've ever recovered um, out of a squirrel with this gun. I hit right through the rib cage. Well, it was elbow and then the rib cage. And literally, the pellet split just like they said. One side went out. One, you know, one piece went out one side of the body, and the other one stayed in, and it split perfectly down the center. I mean, you couldn't ask, draw it up any better than that. So, um, as of 50 yard shots, that's what I'm switching to. They should be here Thursday, next Thursday. So, in the meantime, I'll be making my shots 30 and under again until then. Alright y'all, like usual, I got my cow, uh, Umarex, 25 cow out, the origin, um, uh, I haven't hunted in like, I think it's been three days since the last time I was in here, and I shot them, uh, ones off that tree limb, um, it's crazy that all that blood and all that I couldn't find it, chunks along the whole nine, I couldn't find that squirrel, so. Or any of them for that matter so uh i decided yesterday i had a time to come out I, I was able to get out yesterday if i wanted but i didn't um i decided to just wait i had ordered some h n grizzlies 32 grain slugs and also the pellets that i've already used at 50 yards and they're devastating which are these h n hollow point barracuda hunters I mean, these things are wicked. So, I shot the, long story short, shot the slugs yesterday. Spent the day shooting, and that evening, they didn't get here until later. I spent the day shooting. I shot, I shot the slugs, and they were holding a grouping about this big. At 50, I was the best group I had of them. So I was like, ah, oh, these ain't gonna work. So then I went ahead and grabbed these, which I know at 30 yards shoots a dime-sized group of eight, and at 50 they shoot about, probably a little smaller than a golf ball. Um, but I was going to say about a golf ball size group at 50, but it's probably just a hair smaller. So the size of a squirrel's head at 50, you can stack all eight up in it. But uh, anyway, like I said, I'm, I'm dialed in. Um, I got a squirrel up in this tree in front of me. I got turkeys yelping in the bottom. I'm about to yelp to them right now. I'll bring you guys into yesterday I was up to hunt this morning I could not sleep last night I was literally up all night long I could not sleep for the love of me so it was right around the 530 hour that's when I started getting tired and I'm like man I should probably go to bed and just hunt this evening long story short I was like if it's uh, 25 or higher outside right now I'll hunt this morning it was 16 degrees this morning. It's like, yeah, I'm going to bed. I went to sleep and ended up getting up for this evening. But hopefully I can go to bed early because tomorrow's or tonight's only going to be a little 25. It's almost 50 degrees right now. It's beautiful. It's probably why these turkeys are out here going crazy. Today is December the 20th, and turkey's just going crazy. It's all about that weather. They love that weather.
there he was. He gone. Here they all come, literally. There's like 50 of them. Good to see though. I love seeing my turkeys. Big old hen up in the tree. Let me just film her. If she don't fly. I probably shouldn't have did that. I probably should carry a squirrel in it. County. That's all natural voice calling. I won't even add anything. But I'm pretty decent at natural voice. <sighs> so hopefully y'all enjoyed this me calling all them turkeys in I literally called them in to I'll range it I think it's only seven yards something in there a turkey gobbled there was a gobbler in there with them I heard it I think the camera got it he hammered one time Yeah, I guess they're a little bit farther. They're about 14. That tree to me is 13 that they're all standing beside. It looks a lot closer, but I can't be right. Hang on, ain't no damn way. I guess, I don't know. Thank God for range finders because I was going to guess that at five yards. But uh, I just started learning the fighting purr with natural voice because I want to use it this this uh, spring. I hate when a turkey gets hung up on me. So, like, I don't know, for the past few months, I've just been sitting around the house and I just go, but I put a with it. So, smack the ground it sounds like their wings hitting off each other and just like that I mean they're literally way over there they came took them four minutes and they ran ten yards in front of me I didn't see no long beers but there was a lot of hens but uh, there was one in there but a lot of them stayed when they all flew they all stayed down over the hill so but all the ones I saw all of ten of them right there was all hens I'm hoping I got them all I mean they were beautiful coming up over that thing but anyways, like I say, I'm squirrel hunting today, so April 24th or 23rd is when we'll all be communicating again. I just figured I could call them in because I don't know. I'm just that good, I guess. But with that being said, I'm going to kick back and hopefully the squirrel that's in the tree in front of me will make a move later or another one will and I didn't booger everything for the night when I spooked all them birds.
squirrel at 50 yards right now, but the tree's end's way too thick. I just happened to look up and see him up in there, so what I'm going to do is, with this little bit of wind cover, I'm going to try to get up and make a little sneak until about 35, hopefully, and uh, see if I can't make a shot on him. So, with that, y'all stay tuned. say he's in range but I just I don't have a good enough shot that I feel comfortable taking so I'm trying to move I'll probably get into this big tree and just set up right there because right over that little lip is where all those dig holes are and I'll probably just make my final setup right there since there's not much activity on the ground right now y'all can see it's pretty thick right here behind me. I made it to the tree. I'm currently about 25 yards and I have yet to see the squirrel. I'm gonna guess that he had heard me sneaking. Um, it's just so crunchy right now and that I had a little bit of a gust of wind for a minute but it didn't last long so anyway I'm at the tree. I'm at this big tree now so I'm just gonna pop down right here Got him. Hopefully y'all could see him. Um, you guys probably could have saw him. I had to shoot him. He's seen me. He got up in the fork of this old ragged out tree. I kept seeing him. I could see his head and everything, but I thought maybe it was a hole, so I waited. Eventually he turned around and came back up, and I put it right in the center of his head. I mean, that was a loud shot. I mean, this thing sounds like a 243 going off in these woods. Y'all hear how loud that was? Wow. But he's down right there. I was just kind of sitting here. I was watching for that one right there. About that time I look and here he came right around the bank in front of me. Come up these logs. And I tried to, I think I was going to pick the camera up and move it. When I did, he'd come unglued. And I was like, well, that one's done. You know, he's at, what, I don't know, 13 yards. And I, I'm, I'm done now. So, that's in my head. And then I keep seeing him move. And finally, he came out right there. Give me a beautiful headshot. And I just wasn't on him. I mean, this gun made an awful crack. More, I mean, the gun was quiet, but the smack echoed across there. It sounded like a 
three. That's why I love this. That's why I love this gun so much. I love this gun, I'm telling you. They've all been coming up out of the valley and then following themselves off the edge of the ridges and then getting about midway and going up into the trees. Uh, those two squirrels right there chased each other right down. I, all day I've been sitting here draw, drawing it up in my head. I said, I can't wait to see a squirrel come off them logs. Two of them. They're chasing each other because the squirrel rut is on. There is a such thing as a squirrel rut. You guys can look it up. There's an actual thing of it. Uh, I'm guessing male and female chasing each other. The male chasing her. It came straight up right here and stopped right there on that log. I pulled up, put it right on the side of his head or her head, whatever, and just squaws. I couldn't see nothing. When I shot, I seen a branch explode and the squirrel turn and go. I thought, what in the world? But now it makes sense. I could see all them branches down there, but the ones I couldn't see was the ones that was dead in line with his head and my crosshairs. These are pretty decent sized crosshairs. They were covering them up. And I shot right through them. Long story short, tonight's been a good night. I saw about three for the first two hours, and I'm guessing it's because of all them turkeys that I spooked um, when I called them up to me or whatever. Uh, I'm guessing that was the main reason I didn't see a lot of squirrels out the gate. You know, it's because I ran them up in the trees. But once I got right here and sat down, I'm like, I like this spot a lot. I can see right down in there is where they've been feeding and stuff like that. So I won't keep you all around too long. My battery's only about, I know, let me see. I got 13 minutes left on my camera. So... I think the cold drained the battery, honestly. But uh, I'm just gonna sit back right here. I still got literally about 20 minutes illegal. I'll check my phone in a minute. And uh, I know it should be somewhere around 20. And I'm gonna see if any more come. And let's see if we can't nail another. Y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all, hopefully the camera don't die, but uh, I'll go down here and grab him. I'm not gonna talk a whole lot. I'm gonna try to ease out of here because I'm gonna come right back in here first thing in the morning. As I know, there's literally over a dozen squirrels right there on that bank right now. Could be more. I've heard them barking all one off in them ravines and stuff, but for sure, at least 12 squirrels. So I got a good chance of killing my limit. As you're <coughs> I know it's really hard to see. I guarantee it's hard to see me. But I just stuck it out to the last minute of legal. Legal light's done now. It looks, for me, when the camera looks bright, but I know it's a lot darker. <coughs> oh. Legal light's done. I only had one more minute left. So. Man, God, uh, shot him right here. I'm not even sure if y'all can see it. Alright. <laughs> that other battery died on me. This one here is about to die. But, holy smokes, I killed a giant squirrel. Look at the size of that one. A monster. And I mean devil. I know you all can't see it. It's too dark. I blew plumb through both the ears, and I mean that right side is graphic. It tore him up. I'll be back in here first thing in the morning. I gotta charge these cameras. This one's about to die, so I'll just catch you all soon. Good morning, y'all. Uh, just now hit shooting hours. Um, I slipped in here this morning, and so far, zero squirrels. But, uh, I got to sleep last night finally. Yeah, I mean, I slept pretty good, so that's good. But, uh, like I said, I, I slept in this morning and I couldn't really remember where I saw like all five of them or six of them ones go in that one tree. I'm not gonna say it's this tree right here at like 40. So I just kind of set up about 30 from where I saw the last two go in. The very last two, right? Before, or no, it was after I shot that one. That other one ran down, went in the same hole as that one. So 
I got set up in this tree. It's a great big hickory tree right in front of it. And hopefully the sun starts to come up a little bit. These squirrels will start coming out and moving and I'll be able to nail one. But first thing I got to do is load the gun. But, uh, Nothing much happened on that morning. Um, ended up seeing one squirrel. But the next day I went out, me and Reese, and we dealt, was dealing with bad weather conditions, had some rain and uh, snow mix going through. So as you'll see in the next clip, my camera was covered up. I had walked up into some ravines, found a beautiful area, album some property that he had access to. And uh, I said, hey, that's going to be a pretty good spot. I could see some nut trees. Ended up sitting there and... Ended up having two of them chase right down in front of me, made a shot at one about 35 yards, and dropped it on the spot. camera is covered up right now as y'all can see. So I was unable to get them but uh I happened to just look up and they're both chasing each other. He chased this one to I'd say 25 yards. I drilled it and the other one just now crossed at 50 and I ran the tree over here it was at 50 but So last week I was going to be coming back hunting again and I uh, ended up going to Buffalo Wild Wings in West Virginia and I caught uh, food poisoning uh, from their boneless chicken wings and that put me down for three days. I went to the hospital and stuff. I was sick. Uh, I was awful how sick I was but uh, like I said it lasted totally about three days and then I felt back to normal. Then I dealt with four consistent rain days and all that, so I couldn't hunt none of them. But as of today, this is the uh, best it's been for over a week. Um, this is the best weather today. Coming in this morning, I've already seen a limit. I should have shot two of them, but I didn't have my camera situated. I was still coming in on the path, and they were up on the tree limb right here behind me. But where I set up last week's about 160 yards across from me, um, all these squirrels went that way this morning. They left their dens and just kind of followed the ridge line around. So instead of me sitting way back here, I decided this morning I was going to move up. I'll probably sit here for about an hour, and if I don't see anything, I'll ease up. And I'll start making my way to where I hunted last week, because there was a lot of squirrels back in there.
of them right here in this bottom. These two just went up that tree. I'm going to move up to this big tree right here, looking into the valley, get up behind it, and uh, that way when they come halfway down that hill, they'll be in range. I'm just out of range right here. They need to get right here in this ravine before I can kill them. There's another one right up here in front of me. So yeah, I'm going to make a move. Y'all stay tuned. I see more, but they're just out of range. They're right around 70 yards. That's uh, what I see one. He might be in range. Two. Oh, it definitely is. Ten yards. I shot him right over my head. I had to see her win for like 20.
right, y'all. I'm going to go gather up them two. And then I'm going to go check and make sure I missed this one. I'm pretty sure I did. I was just packing stuff up and having to look and he's coming in. And I probably shot a limb or something. It looked beautiful to me, but I think I missed him from the way he ran. So He looks to be only about 38 and I'm zero for 50. I probably shot over the top of his head. But, uh, all right, y'all, hopefully y'all can see I ended up killing one big male, a great big male, one female this morning. Uh, also, just happy, uh, I guess, happy late Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, hope everyone enjoyed their Christmas. And uh, also, Happy New Year. These are the first two squirrels of 2024 for me. All in all, it was a good morning. I knocked the safety off probably 12 times this morning on squirrels, but unfortunately I only got three shots off. That last one I checked for blood, there's none. Figured I watched him go around the ridge and play around and stuff, so. Anyway, tonight's plans are I'm gonna go into a spot that I ain't hunted since early season. Held a lot of squirrels. I don't know if they're still there, but they were there early season. Um, as long as there's nuts or any area, they'll, they'll still be in there, hopefully, so. I'm gonna be hunting that uh, tonight. All right, y'all got 32 minutes of legal light left. Um, I have yet to lay eyes on a single squirrel tonight. I've heard squirrels, uh, the closest one being probably 70, but I can never see it. I can hear it barking and whatnot. Never did get eyes on it. So, unless anything else happens tonight, uh, I just wanna thank each and every one of y'all out there watching this video. I know it was kind of long, but like I say, that was my goal. I wanted to get as much info out there to everyone that uh, late season squirrel hunts that I could. So, uh, in my opinion, it's definitely worth the watch. Hopefully, when it comes to calling with quarters, I covered that. Um, I'll probably do a, a little two minute video of me at home addressing how you can adjust your quarters and stuff like that to make them loud. And all that. If y'all would like to see, I just comment down below and just tell me. With that being said, I'm gonna set back and finish this last little bit of light out and see what comes in. If not, I'll catch you all on another video real soon. Be sure to like the video, share it, and subscribe. There you go. I got him.